So everyone, we're now on to the most important part of any fantasy football team, and potentially the part that people start with. Not myself, I like to start with a goalkeeper, but I know a lot of people do like starting up front, and that is with our strikers. So, Mr. Miles, I can see that you've uh, purchased Robin Van Persie. Who is this player I've not heard of? Is he any good? I hear he gets referred to as RVP for some reason. What a way. Uh, yeah, so I mean, he's £14 million, pounds, but he did score a sick amount of goals last season. Yeah, again, apart from going Suarez, which, no idea what's happening with him, so... Plus, he's got a six-match ban to start the season off with, so you'd be stupid to go with Suarez. That's true. You can't really not pick Robin Van Persie. I didn't pick him last year for the beginning. He regretted it. So, starting off with him this year... Again, he is ridiculously expensive. And his price is only going to go up, so I might as well pick it now. Yeah. See, for me, I think a lot's riding on David Moyes as my United manager. Yes, he looks like he is played by Peter Capaldi, uh, who's also now Doctor Who. I just think he could very easily, man, you could very easily have a shit season despite all of the, the quality that's there, like Robin Van Persie, because they're missing Alex Ferguson, which is why I have went Wayne Rooney, because I think he's going to be a Chelsea player by the end of the transfer window. And if he goes to Chelsea, plays up front with Juan Mata, Eden Hazard, and other good players around him, he'll score a sick amount of goals. You better hope he does go to Chelsea, otherwise, bench player. He's not going to be on the bench, even if he doesn't go to Chelsea. He's going to play as like the, the top of the diamond in the midfield. Um, so he's still going to get goals and assists. And for the kind of value difference, four million, four and a half, uh, three and a half million pounds, I don't know. I think Rooney, for me, is a better proposition because I can spread a bit of money elsewhere. I don't know where I've actually defence, I think, where I've spent um, the difference in that money. Yeah, I would agree. Potentially, if Chelsea do sign him, there will be a big switch for me and Rooney will be a pick. Yeah, I mean, I think if if he goes, then who's going to pass Robin Van Persie the ball? Is it going to be Ashley Young? No, because Ashley Young, his entire job is to run at the box and then when he gets near, throw himself into the box. So I think it's a lot of the creativity in the Man U team and especially if they don't sign a centre midfield player, they're going to be relying on the same shit centre midfield players they've had for the last six or seven years without a Rooney who can just spark a game in a life. Didn't have a great season, but got double figures in goals and double figures in assists. That's a pretty good season, to be honest. I suppose this is where he's trying to put all his eggs in the Fabregas basket. Yeah. And I think if a Fabregas goes there, I think Robin Van Persie would be a fine choice because if those two have proven to be able to link up and... Uh, he could get a sick amount of goals if he stays fit. And that's another concern I've got on Robin Van Persie. He's, at times, he's a little bit brittle. He's It's only in the last two seasons he's essentially played the full season. Prior to that, he's always been injured for part of a season. He is, he is a big risk for the price, but you just can't avoid that goal tally for last season. Yeah, I mean, it's... The goal tally. You're busy. He won the league there himself. The last two seasons, to be honest, so 26 last season and 30 the season before that. Yeah, it's not bad, like is it? Uh, he's hard. So he's hard not to drop. For our next player, we're gonna have a look at uh, the brown girl in the ring, uh, Bony M himself at Swansea, who, as somebody who's never played in the Premier League before, is valued at eight million pounds. And the reason for that is that in the Dutch league, he scored 36 goals in 36 games. Player of the year. Yeah, it's not bad. I know the Dutch league isn't the greatest of leagues, but, I mean, Kesman and uh, Macaroni would suggest, and also Alfonso Alvarez would suggest it's a shite league, but I think there's something about you where you can get 36 goals in 36 games. Again, he's already had a nice start at Swansea's campaign. Europa League got two goals. Second one yeah. was a bit of a tap-in bit of lucky, but he was in the right place at the right time. Exactly. It's not like they've got quite a nice creative side there, even though Wayne Routledge plays some, but players like Pablo Hernandez, Michu, um, kind of De Guzman, as you've put in there, feeding off him, I think he'll get chances, and if he can start putting away goals, 
Swansea could be a, a decent force. Um, so much so, like the likes of like Liverpool should, and now Everton should be looking over their shoulder. Oh, well, they're not going to be not in the top ten, I don't think, and they're easily yeah. knocking on the door of seven. You could... Yeah. Plus, uh, Loudrup is a super handsome man. He is, yeah. So, if you'd like to say why you've went Lukaku. You look at two Chelsea got up front, unless they do sign Wayne Rooney or somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's the big thing. If they don't sign Wayne Rooney, then fair enough, Lukaku. If they do sign Wayne Rooney, Lukaku's never going to play. Oh, yeah. It's gonna, if they do sign Wayne Rooney, I'm going to have to have a major shuffle around. But at the moment, Denver Bar, £7.5 million pound signing last January. They, they don't even know who he is now. Yeah, will net despite being a far superior player to Torres, will never play. Someone should really get the checkbook out and buy him back. Yeah, he's never going to come back. No. Um, but yeah, Lukaku got what twenty goals last season at West Brom. Yeah, and again, um, he's already said for the opening fixtures the fact that Fernando Torres is going to be playing a game for Spain. He wants to rest him and the likes of Mata. So only leaves the door open for Lukaku and he's had a mint pre-season he's already scored a handful of goals for them yeah I mean he's he's a, he's a big lad he's only 21 and he's an absolute beast and we know that Mourinho loves Didier Drogba and that kind of lone powerful front man the kind of player that can play up front on their own and still challenge two three even four of the centre half something that Didier Drogba as a like a front man did better than really anyone else along the same time. Plus they're playing Hull as the first game of the season. Yeah. Well, actually yeah, aren't they playing the sides of which you've filled your team with? <laughs> so I want a nil nil despite I've got Hazard and Lukaku in. I want a nil I want a nil nil against Arsenal. And then I want the goalkeeper for Aston Villa, De Guzman, to score in the Chelsea game. Uh, three pens and De Guzman to save two of them. Yeah, and the cap- Yeah, I don't think you've thought it through, to be honest. I know. There's a lot of work to be fiddled with. <laughs> so my last pick, um, I've decided to roll the dice and uh, go Gary Hooper, who's just signed for Norwich from uh, Celtic, scored a boatload of goals in Scotland, who hasn't. Stefan Givash scored goals in Scotland. But I think he'll do all right. Um, he's got to play with Ricky Van Wolfswinkel. Oh, which I'm probably going to have to now do every time I say Ricky Van Wolfswinkel. Oh, um, and I think he'll do all right. And he's only six and a half million. Uh, yeah. So he's basically like my cheap option. So for half an extra half a million pound again, you can go Ricky Van Wolfswinkel. Oh, so are you, uh, so I'm not going to say it if you say it, because then you'll say it over and over again. No, but I think Gary Hooper um, knows British football better than uh, the other player does um, and I think he'll settle in better and I generally think he's a good player to be honest uh, he's quick he's got a knife for goal um, I think he'll do alright Norwich have made some decent signings this season I'd say yeah I know I totally agree I think they've done a they've done a cracking little job in the transfer market it's almost like they've spent the additional money the clubs now have to improve their squads if only other teams um he used to be managed by Chris Heaton could do that. Yeah. I suppose they're still the only my only concern about him is that they're still in for another striker. So if they bring in another striker, that means they'll have three quality strikers. Plus they'll have Becchio as well, ex Leeds player. Yeah, but you shit. Oh, he has been in the Premier League. He has been since for them since he joined and I don't see him doing well in the Premier League. Yeah, no, I think uh Wolf will go oh and uh, Gary Hooper. Um Will be a decent forward line. I think I can't really see them signing like another kind of marquee for Norwich anyway. Signing. Plus they've got they've got players to assist, and Snodgrass did really well last season. Yeah. And they've got the new lad, the third lad that a couple of the people were chasing last season. I think it was Fulham that nearly signed them. Was it? Yeah. I mean, I think if um, Grant Holt can get goals, Gary Hooper can get goals. True. Um, so this is our lovely overview of uh, our fantasy football teams. Um, next week, when I've changed probably 11 of them, uh, we may have another video to discuss what we've changed since then. Um, let me know if you think my side's better than uh, Scientologic's side. What's your name of your side, by the way? Captain Terrace. Captain Terrace, nice. I like it. Uh, I went with Norm Athletic. 
Um, I think it was something our guy last season. So let us know um, if you think it's good, think it's bad. Um, if you want to come in onto the show, we're accessing via Skype, and you want to talk about your fantasy football team, then great. Um, drop me a message. I'm on Twitter and fucking all over the shop, to be honest. And um, hopefully you enjoyed. So cheers, everyone. Thank you very much for your uh, lovely attendance, Mr. Uh, Mr. Logic. See you later. Cheers, everyone. Good night.